Let's go to Byron Henry right now, constitutional expert. Byron, how are you doing today? Bloom Daddy with you. Doing great. Glad to be with you, Bloom Daddy. Hey, so we knew this was going to come as soon as Trump declared this national emergency, that everybody's going to start filing lawsuits. In this political chess match, how do you see this thing playing out? Well, in a couple ways. First of all, I think most of the arguments against this are arguments about slippery slopes and, and precedents and political arguments. Legally, the president's on pretty firm footing taking delegations from Congress for money and authority and exercising those. I think it's a mistake. I think the constitutional question here is whether or not Congress can or should be delegating so much authority to the president to, quote, declare martial law spend on appropriated funds, but that's a different question than under current law, whether or not President Trump is allowed to do this. I think he is. I think the statutes are there. You might think it's a bad idea. People might think it sets bad precedents for future Democratic presidents, but that's a different argument than whether or not it's legal. And the legal chess pieces tell me that I find it unlikely that a a solid court or a, the Supreme Court is going to second-guess the president on what or what does not constitute a national emergency based on his position the power that's been delegated to him by both the Constitution and the Congress, as well as all the information from the executive branch he has to draw upon in making these decisions. It's just that's a worse precedent than President Trump declaring an emergency on this, that courts would start second-guessing presidents on matters of of national security and and national emergencies. What about the purse strings? A lot of people are saying it is unconstitutional for him to simply grab money that's not appropriated by Congress. In fact... Congress has appropriated money, and they have not specifically appropriated it, but that's an argument that Congress should be appropriating general money to branches or administrative agencies and the president then getting to spend it as he sees fit. That's not an argument about President Trump using the power that Congress has given him. That's Mm -hmm. my argument as a constitutionalist and, and a separation of powers guy that says Congress should not be giving blank checks to the president period. That's their job, and if they want to give away the authority, if that's constitutional, then the president's going to use it. I have questions about whether Congress can delegate authority to administrative agencies or to the president such as this, and I hope that some conservative justices on the court will take a look at that fundamental question, not about President Trump's move, but about Congress's move in telling presidents of both parties that they can just have this money by signing a national emergency declaration. I think that's a bad idea, and I don't think that's what the founders had in mind. Talking to Byron Henry right now, he's a constitutional expert. Byron, what about the uh, litany of legal challenges? I mean, how long could this drag on? Could could he be campaigning? I mean, it, it, I guess, let me ask you this. By the time campaigns are in full, full swing for 2020, will we, will we have an answer? We should, because most of these cases, on 90% of these cases, or 90% of the case itself will be decided at this injunction stage, whether or not they can prevent certain expenditures. But first, the plaintiffs have to find the right plaintiff, because technically there hasn't been any, quote, um, unconstitutional move unless and until President Trump actually spends money that hasn't been appropriated by Congress. And I'm not aware of any money that he's spent yet, if he's directed it to be spent, if it's been moved, and where did it come from? So those are the kind of technical legal questions that are going to have to be answered at the outset. But once you get the right plaintiff suing, I think probably it won't take much time before courts to weigh in on this to determine whether or not there's any basis to to stop President Trump's uh, national declaration and how he's going to spend the funds. All right. You weren't surprised by all the potential lawsuits, right? Well, of course. I mean, you know, people sue the president and people of the different party for where he eats lunch or dinner every day. So I'm pretty sure that everything <laughs> merits a lawsuit these days. Um, the question is, is it a meritorious lawsuit? And I, I, I sympathize, by the way, with the plaintiffs that have the point that when the president loses a battle with Congress over money, should he be able to spend the money anyway under some other power? That's a great question. I don't think it's a federal lawsuit. I think it's a political question that Congress needs to stand up to the president and say, you weren't good. You couldn't get your money from us. You can't get it some other way. The uh, problem with that is I don't think there's the votes in Congress to, to, to say that to any president, let alone President Trump. So we're going to be stuck with the courts making the decision, which is the worst place because that's the unelected branch. There's no political ramifications for those decisions. When this should be something that your senators and House representative, House representative members um, take a hit on, meaning they should either stand up to President Trump or go along with him, and they should have to campaign on that. But if you leave it to the courts and let the courts do the dirty work, congressmen and, and senators can pass the buck and say, that's in the courts. The courts will decide. Well, it's really your decision how the money gets spent, and they should stand up and take accountability. If they want the money spent, say so. If they don't, they should take the power away from the president.
All right, Byron, I always appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure.